moving. Yeah, where I'm fishing, let's keep one thing clear. The bait's over there, the brew's right here. I like cool beverage, yeah. I like cool beverage, yeah. I like cool beverage, yeah. Uh -huh. Hey everybody, it's Bobby M back for another brewing video and today we're going to talk about the water you use for your brewing and it really doesn't matter if you're an extract or a partial mash or an all grain brewer. Uh, everybody is pretty much equally concerned about what's in the water you use for your brewing and you know there's the old adage that if the water tastes good and is safe for you to drink it's uh, probably good enough to brew with. And I think that's something that um, you know the experts and the more experienced brewers like to tell beginners so that they don't get too overwhelmed with the uh, every little inc intricacy of the brewing process but you know once you get to the point where your sanitation's good and you're you know uh, you have your process down and uh, everything's going smooth but your beers are still just not quite getting there uh, to the level that you'd like uh, attention to your brewing water and the ions that are in it is really the next step to um, perfecting your beer. So I'm going to show you how to find the uh, the data you need to uh, to figure out if your water is good for brewing, uh, if you can't get it from your uh, local uh, water company. Uh, I'm going to sh tell you a little bit about how to interpret those results and ultimately how to use all of the great utilities that are available out there for almost free to really craft what I would consider a water recipe. Um, just like you decide whether or not to use Crystal 10L or 80L in your uh, beer recipe, you really should be looking at the overall profile of your water so that it will affect your uh, flavor profile the way you want it to. And uh, this might be broken down into a couple different videos if, uh, if I'm going to show you uh, example by example how I would modify water to brew certain styles. I might do a separate video for an IPA modification versus a, a porter or a stout because those are going to be vastly different in how I treat them. So um, maybe I'll talk generally in this video and then I'll follow up with a couple of shorter ones uh, where I show you examples of how I modify my water and how you might also. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first thing you need to do is figure out if your water report from your water company has all of the uh, elements that you need information on for brewing purposes. And uh, if it doesn't, you can go to uh, Ward Labs. You can see the URL there is uh, www.wardlab.com. And uh, this is a great service. I've used it and I definitely recommend it and uh, I'll show you really quickly. You can go to About Us, General Information, and then Sampling Supplies, and go ahead and order one or two water testing bottles, also small shipping box, and a shipping label. And then you can fill this out and hit Submit, and uh, they will send a bottle to sample your water in. And uh, just rinse that bottle out in your tap a couple times, and then uh, just put about a, you know fill it up about halfway, seal it up, and put it in the box. And while you're at it, you might send the uh, the payment for the test along with it. I wrote a personal check, and um, so I didn't have to settle up afterwards. The test you want is the W6 household mineral test, and the, you can see that's sixteen dollars and fifty cents, which I think is pretty reasonable for what they do. And uh, you can go ahead and write W6 on that bottle with a Sharpie just to let them know that that's what you're looking for. And uh, once they receive it, the turnaround was something like a day or two days. I received an email right away with my results, and I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, those are the results, and you can see each of the um, minerals like calcium. Right here, calcium is listed at 30 ppm, and so on. There's everything you need to know for your brewing water is in here. All right, so now that you have your test results back, how do you how do you evaluate whether or not your water is good for brewing or bad or what style of beer is most appropriate? Well, you you have to go to a utility unless you want to really educate yourself on each of the elements impacts. Um, certainly read up on it, you know, use Palmer's How to Brew chapter 15 and uh, really learn about uh, the water chemistry as it applies to brewing and that's something you could do over time but I feel like you can use a utility to 
ballpark it or to learn about it a little bit faster and also be able to modify your water for you know brewing now rather than waiting six months until you fully understand the intricacies of, of the chemistry. Um, there are utilities built into a lot of the different brewing packages like Beer Tools Pro and Pro Mash and Beer Smith and you can download a a little piece of software called Brew Water 3.0 if you want to Google that. I haven't found that they are as simple as one that I'm going to recommend right now, uh, which was created by a user named TH on homebrewtalk.com. And I'm going to flash the uh, link to his Excel spreadsheet file download and also the online version of this uh, utility. I recommend the Excel version if you have Excel installed on your PC because it's portable, you can save it on your hard drive, and you can save multiple versions of it depending on uh, the style of beer that you've worked on. And uh, you don't have to keep entering your information every time you want to use the utility. So the first thing you do is go to the top section of the spreadsheet and start filling in the data that you received from your water report. And I recommend using alkalinity and entering that appropriate number from your report. Now. Now that you've entered that information, you, there are some results that you can uh, derive on this sheet. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see the results section here. And at the very highest level, you can look at this recommended range row right here. And these numbers, these ranges were derived from uh, John Palmer's data out of How to Brew. And if your number right here these are just copied down from the top because you haven't done anything to modify it yet so these are just the same numbers that you entered but if if your number is not within range this text is going to be red and if it is in range it'll be green so at the very highest level you can see if your numbers are even in the recommended range of all brewing water so you can see that my calcium is low and so is my sulfate so without even addressing specific uh, beer styles or um, brewing, you know, cities uh, like Munich or, you know, Vienna, you can tell that the water is kind of off for no matter what you're brewing. So I know right away I need to increase my calcium somehow as well as my sulfate. Um, so that's one, one bit of discovery that you go through immediately once you enter your results. There are two other things to, to note about your water situation and the first is especially important if you are an all grain brewer and you want to um, dial in your mash pH so that it performs optimally um, if you go a little too high on your pH you also risk um, off flavors from you know pulling tannins out of the the husk material of the grain so the the number that you need to pay attention to is the residual alkalinity and you know, there's all these formulas in the background and a lot of chemistry involved, but all you really need to know is that the higher your residual alkalinity, the darker of a beer you should be brewing with that water. Or another way to say it is that if you want to brew a dark beer, you need to do things to increase your residual alkalinity. And if you want to brew a pale beer, you probably want to do things to lower your residual alkalinity. And what's nice here is that this utility automatically tells you that given the stats you entered that the best beer color for you to brew with this water is 8 to 13 SRM. And of course this is an approximation and, and all those uh, standard disclaimers, but you know, brewing a 10 SRM beer with my water is definitely producing better results than trying to do a Pilsner or a Stout. And I've, I've seen that firsthand. The other thing to worry about is um, the chloride to sulfate ratio. And you can see here chloride is 53, sulfate is 15, so my ratio is 3.53. And it's it's been um, said that higher ratios, like in, you know, anything over uh, 2, uh, two uh, chloride to sulfate is uh, an accentuator of malty flavors and anything that's uh, actually closer to uh, twice as much sulfate as chloride is more on the bitter accentuation so if you're doing an IPA you want it to go in the other direction. 